Hello, everybody, and welcome in to Brainstorm Brewery. It is a podcast rising today. Zendikar is out. Now, you may or may not... Go ahead. No, that was the title for, like, the episode two weeks I ago. I know, it was a throwback. That... That's not how that works. Oh. Well, I tried. Hey, guys, it's called uh, Empire Strikes Back. It's a throwback to Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> I said... Uh, no, I did it like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's hard to keep it fresh every week. Welcome into the show, everybody. It is the set review for Zendikar Rising. Now, as a reminder, all those other things you've come to expect from us, sudden substitution, breaking bulk, pick of the week. If you're a patron, they are updated in the spreadsheet. And if you're not, you can still watch our sudden substitution segment on YouTube. With that said, we are going to talk all about Zendikar Rising today. And if you haven't been here for a set review before, we do these a little differently. We talk about the cards we like, and then every we look set. at... They if are you've different never been here set. for a set review, you missed nothing because we've done them all... <laughs> Remember we did them all alphabetically and gave them a fucking letter grade? Remember that? Remember? We've tried some stuff. We yeah. tried some stuff. Look. Yeah. I think we've got it much better now, we which was to remove the structure. We haven't tried not set review yet. We haven't quite gone that far. But, uh, but for that sweet, sweet SEO, we will always have a set review episode. Anyways, there are a lot of great cards in the set, and we are going to talk about them. We wanted to look at uh, some of the financial implications of what we've seen so far. And as we uh, don't know what's going to happen in Standard, and as Paper Standard is not really a thing we need to be concerned about, even with the rotation that just happened or happens this week uh, being one of the most exciting times of the year, it's basically all relegated to Arena and that doesn't help prices much. So let's look at Commander, and let's start with EDH Rec as always. Jason, what are people, now that we're you know a week in, what are still the uh, top performing cards from the set in, in Commander decks? Well, it may shock you that the number one most built Commander is still Omnath, number one with a bullet, 164 decks to number two, Akiri Fearless Voyagers, 37. Omnath is wow. the, yeah, it's a, it's outperforming the competition in a big way. It's the only commander in triple digits uh, for decks built. Um, these numbers seem kind of low, so I think uh, people aren't super jazzed about building with cards they may never get. Um, you know, yeah. uh, dealers are getting heavily allocated. I think people will eventually build with these decks, and EDH Rec is scraping quite a few sites. Well, and that's like, one of the um, things that we, we do need to talk about up front is especially in regards to prices. And this is going to be a common refrain if you've been listening to these episodes throughout the pandemic. But we don't know uh, because we know that there's been shipping delays and that we don't know how long it'll be till the, the cards really reach the hands of players in a mass distributed sort of way like you can expect. It might be a week, but it might be a month. Uh, Any and, advice we're going to give is going to be predicated on how things worked pre-COVID. We don't have enough data post-COVID to tell you what's going to happen. because And it's different every time. Jumpstart, and this could be a Korea. Yeah, I, and it's different every time, right? Because the issues that they face, to use the Mythic Invitational as an example, the issues you face at the beginning of the pandemic, working remotely, all of that is one thing. But something else you just can't account for is the fact that the you know West Coast of the United States is dealing with forest fires in a massive way. And sometimes your internet signal just can't get out. And that's the thing with, with when it comes to the set is we have no idea what's causing it. We don't know if the issues here are issues they've even experienced dealing with before. The pandemic might have caused a whole new disruption to the supply chain. So we remember really how, don't know. <laughs> remember how back in like March, April, it was like, ha ha, apocalypse. And then it was like, <laughs> killer hornets and it's like ha ha apocalypse and then it's like giant forest fires and hurricanes this year and started out with australia being on fire and now it's wrapping up with california being on fire like i i don't want to say the people that wrote the up. left behind series of books were correct i just want to say that in the wrapping the left behind series there were fires on earth and there was nicholas cage and all that stuff kind of checks out. Left. Am I getting that confused with the Kirk Cameron? No. Thing? Kirk Cameron was in like the no budget movie. And then they were like, we're going to do a high budget version oh, of all okay. these movies. Isn't that also the plot with Nicolas of Numbers? With Nicolas Cage. What's that? Isn't that also the plot of Numbers? 
<laughs> when uh, they use Sarah plot the numbers. <laughs> I'll remember that movie is the ending. That's the alien one, That's the right? plot to Nicolas Cage. That's, not, that's yeah. the plot. Is there's fire yeah. everywhere and there's Nicolas Cage. I'm yeah. going to steal the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> I'm going to take his face off. All right. So. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so it's about Zendikar Rising, you only um, now, thought you were going to hear about it. Going gangbusters. Akiri, Fearless Voyager. Not. So jazzed about that deck. I don't know, man. I think Ashaya is going to leapfrog both Cherix and Akiri uh-huh. because Ashaya is a deck that is exciting to play. And, and what does Ashaya is do? Tweeting a... Okay, so Ashaya has a power toughness equal to the number of lands you control. Mm-hmm. Non-token creatures you control are forest lands in addition to their other types. You make infinite mana with Query and Ranger. Oh, I found you... some of those the other day. You do all kind of broken stuff with the Shia Soul of the Wild. Uh, Cherix is just like, ah, I'm a 0 17, but. Um, I mean, Akiri's... I'm, I'm putting that in Emily's Phoenix deck. Oh, yeah, because you mill somebody for 17. Like, you absolutely play this in a big booty uh, Phoenix deck for sure. But, like, yeah, I think a is going to leapfrog Akiri and Cherix, but even if it doesn't, go to EDH Rec, click on a Shia, really drill down on the cards that are in that deck, because I think. Like, the ship has mostly sailed on the obvious Omnath stuff, but I think the stuff that's in uh, Ashaya, you know, is maybe a little less obvious. Like, Embodiment of Insight, Leyline of Abundance, Argothian Elder. Some of that stuff is, it's like a little bit more, you know, breaking bulk type stuff. You're going to find, uh, uh, you know, some cards like Earth Surge from Guild Pact or something like that. Like, you're... Creatures get plus two, plus two, as long as they're lands. Like, you're going to... The obvious stuff is like, pretty much been picked over, and Omnath has gone from 20 to 40 everywhere. Or, like, it was like 10 bucks on Card Kingdom last week, and now it's like 35 on TCG Player. So, like, the obvious stuff that, like, ruins every format has been, like, noticed, but, like, you can still get gay as touch for under two bucks, like... The really hardcore, like, I'm playing Forest, let's buy that Hall of Gemstones type stuff is, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, still super gettable for, like, you know, pretty cheap. So, like, as much as we want to be like, well, Omnath is the the deck that matters in this set. And the articles I was writing on ED or on uh, MTG Price this week, I took Omnath and Ashaya and Phyleth. And I put all those lists together and I talked about the common cards that were across all three. So any green, ridiculous, cheating stuff um, is kind of where you want to be at. Phylath is still number eight behind Yasharn, Kaza, and Tazri, which, like, I can't imagine anything be behind. Who's building Tazri decks? Yeah. It's a tribal deck with five tribes? Like, that's nuts to me. Um, Shapeshifters, think, baby. I think Aura, Skyclave, Hierophant, the the Black White Cleric, and Ashaya, Soul of the Wild, the Mono Green Elemental, are both a little bit more exciting than Cherix and Akiri. And I think one, two, three will be Omnath, Ashaya, Aura in two weeks. I uh-huh. could be wrong, okay. but that's what I'm I'm looking at. Yasharn, the um the four four for four, when it enters, you get a forest or plains, and uh, players can't pay life or sacrifice non-land permits to cast spells or activate abilities that card uh i think might be a little bit more popular maybe not in the command zone maybe in the 99 but that's under a buck right now and i'm kind of keeping my eye on that uh phylath world sculptors under a buck too i think that is the new uh uh uh, avenger zendikar and um you know the red in it isn't great but like there's not a ton of times you're playing that outside of red decks. Anyway, you're playing that in Omnath or Omnath or Omnath, or you're playing it in, you know, some other <laughs> landfall deck. So that's about right. Uh, well, uh, I... so real briefly, I want to talk about the top 10 cards. Uh, just like last week, the top seven are all creatures. Uh, soaring thought thief moved up to spot number seven. So it's, it's the same top six as last time. Uh-huh. Omnath, Tazri, green warden, Zara, San, Ashaya, Malrag. Uh, you know, Morag being the just the most broken looking. But, you know, once you start playing with you, are like, oh, it's a six deck for six. This is kind of tough. Soaring Thought Thief has leapt up to the top seven, which is... I like that one. Uh, I like Zara San and Thought Thief. And I like there's a... um, 
there's a card that's only in the um, the Anawan deck called Whisper Steel Dagger. I like Anawan and Whisper Steel Dagger. So like those Zendikar Commander decks might not be total trash. It turns out if because mm-hmm. there are three unique cards in each deck. Um, so if like a Rogues deck built around any Rogues Commander from the past, not necessarily Zerathan, um, but not necessarily not Zerathan. Uh, I think like you. Sig. Yeah, Sig oh, is number one, like, by far. And then Ottawan is playable, and then I don't think there's any other card that makes the cut. Yeah, for a I like Zara Sand just because, like, you can ninjutsu it out of your hand, and, like, why would you want it to be in your command zone all yeah. not flashy? Um, mm-hmm. So Th- Sorry Thought Thief bumping up, like, caught my attention because it passed Feed the Swarm, which is, like, Black's, like, second way of all time for dealing with an enchantment. Yeah. Um, It moved past Phylath, Scoot Swarm, and Valakid Awakening. A uh, Valakid Awakening is not in the top ten. It's under two dollars right now in Card Kingdom. Could that be correct, or is it sold out? It's sold out. Okay, so it's pre-ordering for two. It's now like four bucks. So Valakid Awakening, I think, is a five to ten dollar card. Agreed. That just was on the basis my... of like, yeah. it's a DFC, but it has a really good ability on the front versus all the other DFCs being kind of like whatever. Valakid yeah. Explorations top twenty, theming Skydivers top twenty, Marasa Root Grazers top twenty. And Agadim's Awakening is 20th. Um, I think the top 30 cards in this set are all going to be top 30 moving on. I think they're all playable. Well, what's like crazy... 30... Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, no, we, don't, go we, we, don't have, we don't have Commander Legends yet either. So it's like, no. if this is what we can expect, who knows? And you said something earlier about how... Uh, talking about 2020. It's September, buddy. We've got it three months to go. And not only does that mean three months of pandemic life, that means three months of 2020 magic cards. So Commander Legends might just be more of this craziness. But uh, Valakut Awakening, I'm with you. I I have that on my 505 list for for sure. The Hiri's Lithiforming is 28th. You know, that's how Mm -hmm. many good cards are in this set. Yeah. Like Roiling Regrowth just replaces Harrow moving forward. If Valakut Exploration could just be the Valakut, that the the um, people running scape shift decks in EDH run, thieving skydiver is sick value. You were just gonna you're just gonna take mana rocks with it. It's nuts. Uh, Marasa root grazer goes in every landfall deck that contains white. Which you know why would you not run white if you can at this point? You got admonition angel. You got ruin ghost. You got knight of the reliquary. You've got Retreat to the white one, which is the bad fellow retreat. Retreat to, Amer- retreat to America. Retreat to America. Believe it makes tokens. So. It it uh, it's a bad fellow retreat. It makes a one one core, or you give your creatures one one till end of turn. Yeah. Whereas yeah, fellow yeah. retreat makes a two two, or gives all your creatures one one counters and, and vigilance. vigilance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, well, let's talk about Valakut Awakening for a second. You hit on that one. This yeah, card's really like four dollars like right now, and and yeah, you were right. It, got, it, it, it was, was a two dollar pre order, so we like we missed the boat. Not telling you what to pre order, but like that's almost you never. I mean, you just never pre order. It's, been, it's like, been really rough out there. So not like, a real we thing. didn't want to tell you any information that couldn't help you. And the thing is, it's going to be that cheap again. I think, assuming the set comes out right, assuming the set comes out, I think it'll be two dollars again before it's ten dollars. But I do like this one. Uh, longer now term. with uh, with allocated supply and two waves coming yeah um dj do you want to talk a little bit about why some of the prices might stick on the basis of the supply being split up like that i mean there most of the restrictions from what i've heard have been on the collector booster side uh with delays happening for all of the collector booster products and the the fancy stuff like that i've always just been very very uh, what's the word? Just very, very safe in terms of trying to avoid picking up cards. Yeah, very conservative about it, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, I've yeah. always been very, very conservative when it comes to, like, trying to guess and throw darts at a board in terms of what cards yeah. will make me money. And I will always just be the person that says, like, you can buy 500 soul rings for this instead. Um, or wait <laughs> for Commander Legends and just be like, I don't know, I, I'll take a thousand exotic orchards and hope that doesn't get reprinted in under, another four times or whatever. Like, I don't... I'm but not a huge but our fan podcast of... is catering to people that are like, "Hey, look, I want to play. I want to build an Omnath deck. Should I pay twenty now or should I pay forty later? Or will well, that fifteen later? Omnath is is actually a billion dollars right now, uh, for what it's worth. Because that was a ten dollar like... pre order, and I was like, I don't know if I want to pay ten dollars. <laughs> well, it's because it, it's too. because it seems to be the at the moment 
it obviously the it's moment the is extraordinary is, early. Though. Yeah, it's destroying standard. It's ruining every format. <laughs> every format where Omnath is um, played, it's just like, oh, it turns out there are fetch lands legal in this format. And it just, you can't be killed because you go to 40 and then you have 16 extra mana. You did it. Magic yeah, season. I mean, I, I don't even love Valakut Awakening at $4 just because uh, I, I'm i of the opinion that there's going, it's going to be Yeah, it's going to be $2 and, again, I think. It's going to be forgotten about in like three months and it's yeah. it's it's okay, but I I think that as the large number of commander playable cards goes up yeah. the fact that you will always be restricted to 99 cards prevents most cards from breaking out of that sort of like one to two dollar threshold you it have to you have to be smothering tithe you have to be cyclonic rift you have to stand out and just be this mega staple like it's why i'm not buying lithoform engines at 20 it's not it's why i don't care that much about land harmonicon as well lithoform engine is way down on the list Forsaken Monument, Lithoform Engine. Lithoform Engine's number 60 in the top playable cards. Like well, even that, like, Lithoform Spoils like of Adventure also... and Malachar Rebirth are played more than that right now. So, like, well, and I think, I definitely you know, don't want to be paying, you know... DJ's, oh. DJ's point, I think, is good that we we do see a lot of good cards stay mm-hmm. cheap. Um, yeah, and, and, and that, I think that is a thing that happens, that... right? But... I don't know that there's anything in this set that is smothering Tithe tier. Like, right, and I I think that that happens like a smothering tithe card happens like once every four sets, and that's yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, and I think like, that so I think what we're looking at is, you know, a lot of it is is kind of just predicated on the fact that these cards are going to not experience the same life cycle as uh, cards typically would due to the pandemic. So it's harder when you don't get the set, crash. I don't even think it's pandemic yeah. related. Now, this set is War of the Spark, and War of the Spark wasn't affected by the pandemic, but War of the Spark had like a million $2 cards in it, just because everything was pretty good. Like, there were a lot of pretty good cards in War of the Spark. Pretty good is, like, not good enough anymore. That's the thing. It could be that way, yeah. But also, like, the value was so spread out because everything was about the same. Like, any Planeswalker you got in Limited was like, oh, okay, a Planeswalker. I can win the game with this card. And then there was like, oh, by the way, here's a green card that lets you rip a card out of your deck. You know, there were like two cards that were like, okay, these are obviously ridiculous. And everything else was like, the uncommon Planeswalkers are better than the Mythics in some cases. Like, that (laughs) that set was a mess. And I was like... We're seeing uncommons that are better than mythics in this set, so like, it's kind of the same uh, deal. I don't know. I, I mean, it's like the the biggest parallels. I, I think Smothering Tithe is a good example of like an archetype of a card where it is just like the Cyclonic Rift, or it's like the Parallel Lives. It's just like this card that everybody has to have, no matter what uh-huh. it is. Um, and then the other parallel that's in the same set is uh, Guardian Project. I remember the name. Yeah, uh, and that's the that's the one that everybody wants us to find. That's the card where everyone's like, "Show me the card that goes to one, then goes to five. And again, yeah. that that kind of card is in one every five sets, and that's okay. You 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 don't have to look for something that's not there all the time. That's a fair way to put that, DJ. I think. But it, yeah, but this set has an ancient green warden, which mm-hmm. like it's going to be in multiple decks going forward. Right, but that's, last... a, that's a mythic. That's yeah. that. This is the ancient green ward is the Nyx Bloom ancient where you're like, yeah, duh. Like, okay, so so Phyleth is the Avenger of Zenikar this set, and Thieving Skydiver is the. I don't know. It's not the Agent of Treachery per se, because that like stuff has to impact standard to like super matter right up front. I think the only card really that is an EDH and standard all star is Omnath, which is like the, obviously the best card in the set. You know. So of the EDH only stuff, I think you're going to have some time for Yasharn and Valakut Awakening and like DJ Disagrees, but Felidar Retreat and all that stuff to kind of get to like a buck. And then you start to take a second look at it. And you're like, well, six months down the line, people are going to remember that they own a webcam or we're going to eventually play paper again. OK, and, well, uh, I'm going to throw stuff? one out at you all Um, that. I, I think could be a card that may be close to this. Lotus Cobra. This thing came out no, of the that, gate to dead. like five dollars. Lotus Cobra's dead. It it's was a dead. mythic a it's couple dead. times. It's been climbing over the past six months, and you think it's dead due to this? 
Yes. But yeah, the time to get Lotus wow. Cobra was before they announced it was reprinted. They can sell into the type now. Like it was no, no, no. The original rare. Lotus Cobra printing is like fifteen dollars, along with the iconic masters. And then this one came out of the gates at five dollars and has only climbed since. It's at seven. Because because of standard. But that's what I'm saying. You you should have pre ordered five. Yeah. But I'm like, not saying you even go, now, you go buy but the, even I, I, we're just talking about cards that are, you know, I, I'm, I'm referring to the idea of the, the Guardian project, right? Of a card that's going to be very cheap and, and then go expensive. I mean, Lotus Cobra is not going to be a dollar, but seven dollar Lotus Cobras might not look all that bad. If the card is rare. going to be standard playable, it's a, it rare. Is a rare. I agree. It's a rare, but it's a four of. I mean, it's a Lotus Cobra like this card is yeah. got a pedigree. I mean. It's a okay. So it's a here's the other it's thing about climbing, Lotus Cobra. It's been climbing. been climbing for six months, here's even the, with reprints. But here's the other thing about Lotus Cobra. It's a green card. Yeah. In a set in a in a standard format that has to survive bannings. <laughs> like I'm, I'm serious. I'm serious. Right. Like you, the, they are they are originated. people are playing turn three Ugin right now. People on arena. Wizards of the Coast designed this format. To also have Oko and Once Upon a Time. <laughs> Those were intended to be legal. I don't even Lotus know if you can say they Euro. intended anything at this point. It's so bad. <laughs> yeah, and I like, refuse do, to do believe think, that standard Lotus was Cobra tested. survives like its duration in standard without other Once green Upon cards a Time. I, Oko, I, I cannot say that Euro, I considered that. Omnath, um, Lotus Cobra. I, I imagine what this format would have been like with all the banned cards legal. I'm, but like that's, wow. that's, that's, that's G Wilker's guys Vera's that's all funny. the split currents that's pretty funny. good with Lotus Cobra. We came up with that in future future league. Look, yeah, I look, I don't have a counter argument to that. I that is what it is, I guess, and you can deem that whatever risk you want uh when you're looking at Lotus Cobra. I think uh, you know, I, I like I don't think I'd be buying it now, even though it's gone up a little bit in pre orders. I'm still waiting for cards to hit the market before uh, you know, like, I would and, recommend and buying Lotus Cobra. We find in casual forever, and that's that's always been a thing. But like, I, in terms of standard, I don't want to touch it. Yeah, that's fine. But like, look, if 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 Lotus Cobra was a an eight to nine ten dollar car before, and it was climbing up, it was climbing to fifteen this year, and now I have a chance to get you know, if in a month I can get five dollar Lotus Cobras, well, I probably think it's going to be a ten dollar card again. You know, that's that's the thought. Maybe I not like, because it's a rare, like but that's that's showcase. just a card I have an eye on. Right now, Showcase Philath is like two bucks. That could get Meh. cheaper. That card's nuts. Like, the only card I like as a Smothering Tithe S card in this set, and not that's not even saying that it is a Understood. Smothering Tithe, it's yeah, just yeah. like the closest thing, probably is Morog. Isn't. Is Morog? Morog is the card that I like most in this set. I would like it if it wasn't fourteen dollars, right? Like, yeah, if Morog was like expensive. seven or eight, I'd be like, "This is the this is the thing that red players are like. I want more of this. Give me that more." That showcase like, is yeah. hot too, with the sun in the background. He's all run Morog. I'm tearing up my Morog <laughs> and the <laughs> other uh, the other dragon Leyline Tyrant. Like those those two cards yeah. are like perfect. They're, they're perfectly yeah. designed red mythics, and every red player and commander is like inject more of this into my veins now. Like those are the closest <laughs> thing that that we have in this set to smothering tire uh -huh. and i i would not be surprised to see leyline tyrant at like 25 dollars in a year well then let's talk about leyline tyrant because leyline leyline tyrant it's is ten dollars right now sixth most played card i'm sorry how far and it should be way more it should be 56. way way better 56 it's, it's, okay so it's a four mana four four dragon two and two red uh you don't lose unspent red mana as step sand phases in when Brain leyline tyrant fire, dies baby. You may pay any amount of red when you do it deals that much damage to any target. I think that this card is absurd. It's a 4-4 four, four for 4. Uh, that's, it's not that's a 7-7 seven, like, seven for 8. It's a 4-4 four, four for 4. It flies. That's, it's that's less than it pressures endorsed, Planeswalkers. Like, it pressures power life creep. totals. Power creep nowadays, like, saying, oh, it's a 4-4 four, for four, 4 flyer is like saying it's under... That's I know. like. That's I like know, five years I know, ago. It's like, it's like a two, two for three. Like, that's <laughs> well, I, I agree. But here's the thing. This effect is just so rare yes. and unique in yes. magic. But and I mean, not you're saying it should be stable red. to a bigger creature. This is, I mean, this is just a slam dunk pick. And I just want to see how low it'll go before you but get them like all. it's like 12 bucks though. It's 10 right now. The, the market price on this card is $10. And while we're here, as a reminder to everybody, any of the cards we're talking about, you can and should uh, look at picking up from our sponsor, 
Channelfireball.com, your best place for channels, fireballs, and content uh, on the internet. Outside, of course, of where you can find our content. If you have a Channel Fireball account, you get a kickback of store credit. Um, I would recommend banking that. You get the store credit, like when you you pay for the uh, the the subscription. I would recommend banking that and saving that for uh, a set, maybe kind of like this one that's got some nutso cards. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, wow, when did I accrue 30, 40, 50 dollars in store credit? I can just snatch that stuff up for free. And it's, you know, it's basically like you got cards on top of you. You paid for cards and then got free access to Channel Fireball. So I really like that. As far as paywalls go, people are like, oh, paywall. Like, this is a paywall that pays you back. So, like, if you're doing that, bank that credit for sure. And then snag a play set of Leyline Tyrants when they uh, get to eight bucks or whatever. Like, the, yeah, the Leyline other Tyrants huge thing about Leyline Tyrant is that, and again, this is a market that hasn't seen this card, is, like, person who buys packs at Walmart hasn't seen this card yet. Yeah. And yeah. this goes in their dragon deck as a four of, and yeah. this ramps their dragon deck because this is the cheapest card their dragon deck plays. Right. Like, they, they play this on four, and then they untap on turn five, and they have a hand of nine mana dragons, and they, like, play my land, bank five mana, go. Mm-hmm. And then four other players pass the turn cycle because these people play, like, 78 card decks in seven person pods, and then they get to play <laughs> their nine mana dragon. I mean, like, look, uh, Omnath Locus of Mana, uh, which is, of course, the classic three mana one uh, that does this in green. And green is a ramping color, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. But it's $30. Yeah, I mean, like, it's, just, it's just so expensive. And it, it's just an incredible card. And we know what Leyline Tyrant's going to do. And it's, 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 it's insane that it's $10 to me because just because I expected it to be higher like, in the pecking the, order, not the necessarily answer, the number. The answer to Omnath is like, during your draw step, getcha. Kill it. Yeah. This is like, okay, do that. Yeah. Get you for 10. I didn't even think. I, I honestly haven't. Even, I've just been like, oh, yeah, it's a red on math. No, you're right. It, it, it has an upside uh, of a it's very, a very powerful like, it, it threat, yeah. It's like, oh, you're going to be the one to th- kill my dragon? Well, Tenya. Yeah. Well, I like this card, and this is another one. Have my eye on it. Is it uh, if it continues to fall as it is now? And if it doesn't see standard play, it might get. Uh, at a really good looking price. I would rather own 1.5 Leyline Tyrants over, like, at a ratio to one Lotus Cobra, or one one Leyline Tyrant to 1.5 Lotus Cobras any day. Okay. Yeah, I, you know what? I mean, I agree with that, for sure. Uh, here's one to talk about. Thieves? Because there are Lotus oh. Cobras already out there. For sure. Well, yeah. Uh, all right, well, let's talk about, Jason's mentioned it, a thieving skydiver. This is a merfolk rope. It's a two-one for two flyer. Uh, however, it has kicker of X, and uh, when you pay that kicker of X, you gain target artifact with X or less. You get control of it, and if it's an equipment, you put it on the skydiver. I love this card. I don't know how good this is outside of EDH. It's probably medium. I mean, I don't think that I'd be playing this in modern merfolk or whatever. But I don't know. Maybe you put them in the sideboard of legacy to get some jits or something, right? You mean Umazawa's Jite? Yeah, whatever, man. I think Te means hand. I don't know what Jit means. I don't know. I live in Oklahoma. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> Thieving Skydiver, though, at $3. No, um, don't, don't like I it. I saw a tweet that someone's I'm, like, I'm not the saying buy it. I'm will, saying what price it is. The closest we'll ever get to being, to experience what it's like to be a ghost is knowing a piece of trivia that someone on a podcast doesn't know. So like somebody knows what G tape means. What a and weird way to car screaming like, oh, it means split <laughs> hand, you idiot, you dumb gaijin. And you know what? I'm sorry. I know T means hand because of karate. That's all I know, man. I know neko T. That means cat hand. That's I didn't a know any of the this, actually. Block. Yeah, man. T E. That's hand. So okay, cool. G That could mean anything. You Isn't know? it so. like the the weapon, the equipment? Well, yeah, it like, is. It's like it's is, the but... GTA is a half a psi because you're like, well, I could buy a psi, but like psi makes artifacts. I, I want to correctly guess which side what? of my body they're going on. Psi makes thopters. Uh, I can tell you what it means. I just looked it up. Who's what does GTA mean? Ten hands. Oh. Ten. What? Oh. 
10 hands. My silver god ups did not have 10 hands any of the times they hit with a Jitte. Well, that just, I think the Greeks are showing off because they have 100 hands or whatever. They do have uh, that 100 handed one is a card of yeah. arrows. Yeah. It's like 10 Jitte's. Huh. Oh. He gets 20. He, when he, he deals damage, he gets 20 counters. That's actually like a really missed opportunity. I never saw anybody, you know. Make a joke or anything about that, like how hundred handy. You think Umajawa's Jitte is good? This is ten Jitte's. Well, handy nobody wants a cool card. Nobody bothered to get really drunk on a Monday night and just <laughs> like get all etymological on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Well, cross uh, culture. So. Hundred handed one. If you make it monstrous, by the way, it can block ninety nine additional creatures. I think like uh, I th- would like to see a Kamigawa card that was like hundred handed one, but it was just like one dude doing a hundred handed slap. <laughs> Like E Honda, <laughs> E Honda style, huh? Well, hundred handed wow. slap. I, isn't that just like a regular sumo technique where you just like wail on a dude and knock him out of the ring? That's yeah, cool. The only thing I know about um about competitive sumo is there was like a really scrawny dude who like would let the other sumo guy uh, charge at him and he would step out of the way and like grab the guy and throw him. And like it was super effective, but they I'm were sure there's a ceiling was, to that. It was though, like right? mad like, disrespectful to like hip toss a guy in sumo. Yeah. Because they, you're so supposed I, to like there face has to be a ceiling to that He's strategy. Just like, Wah! Once I haven't they know. really been listening to a single word you guys have been saying. Well, that's probably Wik- that's well, probably I've been on fair. Wikipedia, and so I'm here to report that uh, the the most likely etymology of jite is that. The shape of the weapon looks like the the character for ten. Oh, okay, okay. So That's like cool. the the cross shaped, uh, yeah. The the appearance of the jite looks like the Japanese character for ten. That I can dig it. Okay, That's I'll cool. buy that. So it's a ten you wield in your hand. Look, we don't know shit about the distribution of this set. We don't know what prices are going to do, but we will be damned if we're going to let you get out of here without learning something this week. Your number one source. <laughs> your number for ten Jitte source. information. <laughs> anyway, so Thieving Skydiver, Jason, you love this card, right? As an EDH player, I love the ass out of this card. Um, <laughs> I, I play mean, Thought I of Adele too. in just about every blue deck. Um, uh-huh. Thieving Skydiver, just if all you do is so play flexible. this as a three drop and steal a soul ring. Yes. Whoop. Yeah. yeah this I is mean, like, so, it steals mana so, for free. I mean, it steals. It's so steals mana good. For free. Um, I read. Sick. So I read the um, the Sun Tzu's Art of War when I was very young as a magic player. And there's a passage in Sun Tzu's Art of War that says a bushel of my enemy's grain is worth 10 bushels of my grain. I was like, oh, shit. That's a good point. But that's not how Because if works. you steal something from somebody in the oh. zero sum game of having things, it's a two point swing in your favor. Uh-huh. You didn't just steal a thing because you have a thing and they don't have a thing. So it's like it's two points in your favor. It's better than just blowing it up or playing your own thing. Yeah. Well, so why didn't you have Sun Tzu say two bushels instead of ten? Yeah, it's not ten times better. I don't know about his math. You, you well, I guess he wrote an, an old art dead book, guy? not cool. a math Dig book, him up I guess. and tell him he was wrong. <laughs> We're not talking, you know, maybe the exchange rate for uh, soul rings bushels. is different from the oh. exchange rate for bushels of grain, which hey. are consumable, versus a soul ring, which stays in play multiple turns. Maybe. Like, Maybe it's, a, oh. it's surely a question. Actually, any of our listeners, um, if you do know the uh, correlation between um, uh, the ratio of soul rings to bushels, um, please email us at brainstormbrew.com and let One us know. One of my opponent's commander spheres is worth 10 of mine. Because <laughs> I'm just going to tap that for a mana, then pop Put it. Put that one like, on a ah, T-shirt. Drew a card, idiot. Uh, Slap yeah. that one on a T-shirt. In fact, you should try to steal their commander sphere. You should try to steal all their shit with Thieving Skydiver. You well, shouldn't Corbin, just like, stop you, there. You can't make, like, that happened in our commander game, and I had to remind you to <laughs> sack it. Oh, yeah, that, I mean, we yeah, there was a trigger missed. Yeah, 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 for sure. I was like, aren't you going to sack that to draw a card? And you were like, oh, yeah, you're right. I guess. So, Thieving Skydiver is just a very good very good card. I like bouncing it. I like blinking yes, it and but don't returning buy it. it to my hand somehow. Yeah, don't buy, don't buy it. I like the yeah, Buy yeah. the one you need for like two or three dollars and then shrug as just... it goes to one dollar after it stole 18 <laughs> soul rings. 
Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, let's talk real well, quick. But, but this oh, has sorry, a this has like an alternate art and has like an alternate art foil. Like there are all kinds of thieving skydivers. Just get the one that you like the yeah. best. Agreed. Uh, well, let's talk real quickly. You know, outside of just saying don't buy the expensive cards, I'm I'm going to read off the uh, the the most expensive ones here: Omnath, Lithoform Engine, Ancient Green Warden, Ashaya, Turn Timber, Symbiosis. That's the Green Mythic Land. Uh, just so many so that's your top five I, I love how it like if you're trying to type this in something you have to type in turn timber symbiosis slash slash turn timber no, serpent well it's most, just like forced I'll say that on most back don't. tap for green on back did you yeah, really yeah. make me type all that shit it is annoying uh, after back. that it's it's morog forsaken monument nissa of shadowed bows uh boss uh, it's about ba- ba- boss boss bows how do you say Baz? that bows when the bar breaks, the baby will fail. It's bow, dude. <laughs> Today I learned. <laughs> Nissa is worth more than Leyline Tyrant. Yeah, well, just by, by by a little bit, yeah. But then it's Leyline Tyrant, Scoot Swarm. So, uh, is there anything up there that stands out to you as wrong? I think, uh, or is anything you think is going to move up or down? Color should be higher than. Seagate Stormcaller, yeah, which I think was 11 here. The I one that copies actually, spells. I don't know what I would drop, per se. I don't think Nissa is that good. So maybe Seagate, Stormcaller, and Nissa will swap spots. But, like, Scoot Swarm is going to be so impactful that people are either going to be like, I'm playing Caravac as four of main, or they're just going to get swarmed. I don't I don't know if people are going to get scooted or if they're going to, like, immediately adapt to it. So... A twelve dollar non mythic rare is pretty crazy, um, considering yeah, the the rest agreed. of these top ten cards are all mythic. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I think that's going to fall for sure. And I think um, Seagate Stormcaller is, is it's one of those cards where the players who are going to do really ridiculously broken stuff with this will take two weeks longer to figure out how to be super broken with this than the people who are like, wow, when I play a fetch land, I get all the scoot swarms in the world. You know, yeah. and then, like people yeah. scoop to my Omnath when I play it on Arena. I think Seagate's Stormcaller is a card that'll take longer to unlock. And that could be why it's like not in the top five, per se. Mm-hmm. But I think the players whose opinions about really hardcore competitive magic that I respect the most think this card's nut or butters. And I don't know if it's a card that belongs outside of the top 10, per se. I- I'll give you one I think can drop. And it's one of the top five. Turn Timber Symbiosis. It's a seven mana. This is the flip. It's a land on one side and, and a seven mana green sorcery on the other. Look at the top seven of your library. You can put a creature card into play. If it has CMC three or less, it gets three plus one counters. You put the rest on the bottom. Do people know that Summoning Trap exists and it's six mana and it's an instant and you get to play it for free when something gets countered? Look, I know format. that making a land drop is cool and all, what but... Format? Huh? Wait, what format are you talking? Any format. Summoning Trap is legal and standard? Look, do we think that this is entirely predicated on standard? Dude, I don't know. I think this card like showed up in people playing that Goblin Charbelcher list. Like, I, I think that could... I don't think people are paying seven mana for turn 10% Symbiosis. Well, sure, but like, I don't think that Charbelcher list made this card $14, do we think? I, I I have no idea why this card is this. I say card. that. I mean, it came out of the gates at eight, and it has gone up. So it may just be a, a competitive play thing, I suppose. Uh, that's possible. That would make some amount of sense because, and, and look, it's not like I thought the whole thing was predicated on 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 the commander price here, but I, I don't All know. It just seems really super expensive. High. Seagate restoration is eight. Amirius call is eight. You know, like it's it seems like a lot of those cards are like more expensive than yeah. you might necessarily. Expect. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it's it doesn't even seem to be in this. I think scatters. Uh, I think sca- shatter best. skull smashing is better than turn temper symbiosis. So I'm really surprised the prices aren't flipped. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, because I've seen people do some ridiculous stuff with shatter skull smashing on arena. Yeah, interesting. Because you for double sure. it for like eight mana, which is a lot but uh-huh. not a lot with Omnath per se. I don't know. 
Well, yeah, and another one, I'll, I'll give you this, everyone at home, you can make up your own mind about what you want to do about it, but Genesis Ultimatum is a bulk rare, uh, and it is all over the place in the standard Omnath decks. Uh, so, yeah, uh, it, I, look, it's it's a Coria, there's all these different versions of cards, all of these things are true, but the market price of this card is like 40 cents, so, you know, something to consider uh, if you're looking at that, or maybe the extended art, but... Genesis Ultimatum is a card that's very cheap. I'm not making it a pick of the week because it's day three of standard and I refuse to make any you know proclamations no, based on that. But it, it, it seems it, like it's, it's going good. to be over the place in standard. But it, like Genesis Ultimatum is like not outside the top 20. Oh, let me look. It's it's not doing terrible on EDH rec either. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a fun card for sure and a powerful one. Uh, so I'm not at all surprised to see, but yeah, I, I think that that uh, that that green mythic is probably likely to come down in price here. Um, so I guess if we're looking at a candidate for dropping out of that group, that's that's the one I have my eyes on. Genesis but. Ultimatum is the 18th most played card from Akoria, um in EDH, and that's like it's above Skull Prophet and Fiend Artisan and Real and Dire yeah. Tactics and Reconnaissance Mission. So like, it's not unplayed in EDH. Well, it's in ten percent of all teamer decks. And I mean, mm -hmm. going back to Ikoria, let's let's like remember and what like what I said about this set about Zendikar, where it's like there's so many good cards and everyone wants us to pick the one card that's a one dollar card that went to five. Like we can say the same thing about Ikoria. When we when Ikoria came out, we're like, there's so many good commander there cards are. for the set. There's all the ultimatums and all the yeah. companions and all the stuff and all the things and like all the wedge legends and all the, the the crazy stuff and bonders enclave and Saul bonders Creek. enclave is this 60th most yeah, like, played it, card it's like you, that's you how can't nuts just, this set is card's pretty you have good. to be smothering type yeah. you have to be this this ultimate mega staple that is that is going to shoot above the rest of the stars yeah and plus yeah, ultra yeah. and all this <laughs> garbage <laughs> Luminous like, Brood Moth is 45th. This set is bonkers. <laughs> Luminous Brood Moth is 45th. That's how that's dumb this set is. Akoria yeah, is that's just, dumb. Just yeah, look, DJ's, look, DJ is absolutely right about that, and everyone should keep that in mind. You know, my thing is, it's just also true that I feel like we have seen even rares kind of get off the mat, so to speak, in terms of being worth money if they're decent. Uh, and... and you know, come out to be in that three to five, six dollar range sometimes after a couple years. So, you know, as far as short term gainers here, unless you want to play the lottery on the, the Genesis ultimatums. Yeah, I mean, it's not like we're adv advocating buying any of this. I think it's all going to become cheaper. Um, and then we'll see, you know, that's I think everything's predicated on, on finding the bottom of these cards. I want to yell at Wizards for a second. Please do. Not, not yell at them. Give them a stern talking to. A strongly worded verbal letter, if you will. Yeah, yeah. So I I am not a Boros player. I used to have an Archangel Avacyn deck. It was a lot of fun. I took it apart just because I got a little bored of it. Um, But it was it was powerful. It did a lot of enter the battlefield flicker shenanigans that most Boros decks don't do. Because I, I looked at Archangel Avacyn and I said, I want to design a Boros deck that's so operative goal is to generate card advantage so i looked at most red and white creatures mostly white that i was like enter the battlefield so like all the stone forges all the obvious stuff all the knight of the white orchids all the the restoration angels all the all the recruiters all the 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 teshars the the blinky stuff the flickers um and it was a good deck it was powerful and it it, it did cool timmy things sometimes and it was great i could basilisk collar avison pretty quickly and just do a lot of cool stuff and it's frustrating as a mostly not Boros player, because I play mono black. I get to draw all the cards I want. I get to do all the things. Um, but it's frustrating to see them design cards like Akiri and Nahiri in 2020 and still lack a way to give Boros an identity that's not just equipment. Because equipment as a card type, as a, like, function of how the game in, of Magic works is, like, inherently flawed. 
and equipment have to be actually broken and just game breaking in order to see constructed play. Like you have. You're to talking about of, because of the pay mana to equip, get it removed in response conundrum. Yeah, like as a sorcery mm-hmm. speed. Like, right. Here's you have two you have two opportunities. Like yeah. I'm playing this and then I'm moving it over both at slow speed. Yeah. And you can um, answer the artifact or the creature, then, et cetera. And then every once in a while, they're like, well, hey, if you think Boros is weak, we ruined a couple formats with Winota. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, like... Fair. Like, uh, like you have to be skull clamp, and you have to be sort of yeah. famine to be good as an equipment. Like, that's just... You yeah. have to be an eight-mana effect on a three-mana card, and then that's not healthy game. Well, and it's so, interesting, like, because the one time they went the other way... With the instant speed equip cost, they got burned over cranial plating being broken with an instant speed equip. So it is it's a tough not, balance to not, strike, but you're right. That's not instant speed equip being broken. That's cranial plating being an outlier in a world where they don't want to design onboard tricks. And I mean, yes, back, yes, I understand. And that goes back to our discussion on Neurox Stealth Suit last week, where right, it's like right. they don't want to put onboard tricks in a format where you can be like, you idiot, you should yeah. have targeted my thing. Look, because look that's definitely fun. true, but it is also true that a, a non-zero amount of the power of cranial plating comes from the fact that an affinity deck can move it to a different creature in the middle of combat and kill you. Uh, right, with and, their, but that's not yeah. a function of, like, it's game design. Well, that's what I'm saying. If they were looking, they're looking at ways to solve that problem you're talking about of it being slow, being sorcery speed, and I say, well, you know what? Let's make artifacts that can do both. They can be equipped at instant speed or sorcery speed. Yeah. And they kind of got burned doing that. And not so, not that that's a fault of necessarily that design process per yeah. se, right? But you know, as it turns out, it didn't work out very well. And like, it goes back to the discussion we had previously on like every, co- uh, in my opinion, every color should be able to do everything to a weak or strong degree, depending on what the color pot. Like, I'm okay with black getting blow up an enchantment once in a while, but uh-huh. also pay X life to do it or whatever. And I'm okay with white getting counter spells i'm okay with red getting counter spells as long as they're the knobs and dials are turned in right. such a way and, and they have their own identity in those colors is what i yes like. exactly but like it's there's ways to give red and white that card draw and that uh that mm-hmm. ability to generate card advantage like we've seen with like recruiter of the guard is a great example like that that's a very well designed white card um yeah. and like it's very frustrating to see in 2020 like because we got the Mark Rosewater teaser of all the the weak little tidbits of like we're gonna you're gonna yeah. see a card that does this and a card that does Y and a card that does Z, um and it was like you're going to see a Boros card that says whenever you X draw a card and I didn't think it would be equipment because that's just so like they've done that before yeah it's it not, is well trodden ground and it's uh, not a it's not an effect that is ever going to be playable. No mm-hmm. matter what you do, because of the inherent ways equipment yeah. works of like, okay, I'm going to play my creature at sorcery speed, and then I'm going to play this other equipment at sorcery speed, and then I'm going to try to put the equipment on my creature at sorcery speed, and then I'm going to play my card advantage engine. Oh, you you, you <laughs> screwed it up at some point. Now I get no yeah. card draw. Yeah. Versus well, green, it's like, enter the battlefield, draw a Like, Omnath says, play me, draw a card. Yeah, well, here's one that I think is playing in the space that I, I've had played against me recently. Tectonic Giant from um, from Theros Beyond Death. It's four yes. mana, three, four. Whenever it attacks or becomes a target of a spell an opponent controls, you get to either deal three damage to each opponent or exile the top two of your library until the end of your next turn, you can play them. Or in this case, I'm sorry, you get one of them and you can play it. But this and, is the kind of thing I think that would be cool to see more of. And it's, and it's a state of, it's a statement of, wizard's design ability the past two years that that card is unplayable well yeah that card is powerful in commander as it turns out yeah yeah but like if you showed somebody this card in 2015 they'd be like red is nuts what are you what this is crazy this is cool it's completely forgotten about in standard yeah not even tried anywhere yeah all right well before we get to the last uh slate of cards that excite us i want to talk to you about original magic art dot store if you love any of the beautiful art we have in this game and you want to see it on either a print, a playmat, some tokens, Original Magic Art has you covered and it has all kinds of options. Originalmagicart.store is where you want to go to check it out. 
there are some new playmats being added constantly, new art that you can get. So if you, uh, there's a lot to look at on the website, a lot of different stuff. There's honestly, we could spend a lot of time talking about it, but go look it up, check it out. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff there for you to find. Uh, okay, so before we head out of here this week, let's go one more time around the horn. Is there anything we missed? Is there anything that, you know, maybe financials aside, that's particularly standing out to you from Zendikar Rising that you want to talk about? DJ, any other rogues in the last, uh, you know, that as you've had some time to process the cards that you might be able to play? Uh I have my, what I believe to be is, like, my finalized SIG deck based on the full Zendikar Rising uh, set, and, and uh -huh. I mean, I'm, I'm including, like, the commander decks in that, just because Anawana's in that. Yeah. Um, and I think there's only those four. Anawana? Anawana? Do you hold them in your heart? Your reference is lost on What do you think about them? Does it make you want to fart? Oh, Corbin's going to pretend not to get a Salute Your Shorts reference, too. Okay. Jason, what? we've talked about this. We've talked about how you've definitely seen Salute Your Shorts if you watched Hey Dude. Missed it they by were... three years, man. <sighs> Sorry. Corbin, so, get it right or pay the price. <laughs> so the, the, the overall Zendikar Rising cards that I'm playing in SIG are Soaring Thought Thief, which is the blue-black uncommon with flash and flying. As long uh -huh. as an opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard, you get an anthem. And then whenever your rogues attack, they mill. That card's yeah, fantastic. That it's below the yeah. curve. It's flash. It's everything you want. Thieving Skydiver, we talked about steal stuff. Uh, I am playing Ottawan, which is the just the... A more standard anthem effect, four mana, two, four. Other rogues you control get plus one plus one. Whatever it's rogues. probably Anna one, and that's why I keep thinking salute your shorts whenever you say Anna one. I don't know. I don't, I don't know his Zendikari right? pronunciation guides. Um, But he he draws cards, he hits people, he does what the deck wants to do. And he's the card from it that's only available in the uh, the commander deck. Correct, yes. He is the mm -hmm. he, he's the head of the commander 2020 Zendikar precon. Now, another um, popular, not to like step on DJ's train of thought, but another popular card is uh, Oban Maldaya Ancestor from the from those commander decks. Like, I kind of think Oban and Trove Warden and Anawan and Whisper Steel Dagger are popular cards, and those are only available in those two decks. So, like, I don't know what the supply is on those. Like, no I don't time. know. I don't know how to, to what extent enfranchised EDH players are going to be interested in those decks, so I think those prices might not come down as fast because I don't know how inclined dealers are going to be to bust those decks open. Although, the reprints in both of those are pretty juicy. Yeah. Um, and then the final card is Zareth Sand, the trickster. So I'm, right. I'm playing four cards from Zendikar Rising in the road deck. That's pretty I don't good, right? I don't think most of the other ones are worth playing uh, if you're like getting a very a, a very streamlined uh and very very hyper efficient i, I don't want to say it's competitive deck because it's it's tribal i'm playing invisible stalker and commander i'm not a player <laughs> yeah sure deck. sure sure um but it's i i would consider my deck a probably like an eight or a nine if we're talking about like theme decks that uh that are trying to do a specific thing very very well the two biggest cards that I don't play in Sig, just out of principle, are Arcane Signet and then the free the free spells from Commander Twenty Twenty. Those don't are play, fair principles. I don't play the what's it what's it called? If you have a Commander Force of Will, I don't play Fierce that. Guardianship and whatever the black like insta kill thing is. I don't play those, and I don't play Arcane Signet. Everything else is basically fair game. <laughs> Understandable. Have you guys <laughs> taken a look at these Commander decks? The Anna one one, yeah, I saw that both one. of them. They're both f pretty loaded. Yeah. Now, like we said, I don't know how and how excited and franchise players are going to be for this deck, but like the first one has Admonition Angel, Maria Angel and Shepherd, Multani Sun Titan, Rampaging Bailoths, Omnath Locus of Rage, which they is a mythic. finally reprinted Sun Titan and Rampaging Bailoths. Finally. <laughs> But like those are nice Omnath, reprints. Those, those are playable reprints. Nina and Den, that was a card that was gonna yeah, get there eventually. It was, it was. Omnath Locus of Rage. A lot of people are gonna want that for all the Omnath decks they're building lately. Um it's got 
Nissa's renewal, but like even on commons like Circuitous Route and Far Wanderings, like stuff like that. Uh, Return of the Wild Speaker, that was a card that was eventually going to get there because of how much it's played. Um, Seer Sundial, that's a real card. This is another way to get your Arcane Signet and your Soul Ring. Um, even older stuff like Abundance, but new stuff like the Mending of Dominaria. That you know, the deck is uh is pretty stacked. And then the other one, um, not as good per se with like the ridiculous mythics in it, but like it's all like two three dollar cards that might have gotten there someday. And even some stuff from Forbidden Breaking Bulk sets. Like Frog Tusser, Banneret, and Marsh Flitter, and Una's Black Guard stuff we're not allowed to pick anymore. But even like your your Sir Conrad, which would have gotten expensive someday, on Zulu Park I mean, Cutthroat. I will. Like a and lot of these cards where you're talking about where like they would have gotten expensive, like they will. Yeah, but these are these are nice reprints yeah, coming in but by it'll Wizards take on long, those. But Notorious Throng, I think, is the real money reprint in the second deck. Yeah. N Notorious Throng is a, is a great reprint, and I'm, like the fact that um, this this commander deck came out, and um, what was the what's the other prowl card? Not Throng. The knowledge one that, exploitation. I yeah, got you. Knowledge exploitation went way up this week. Oh, that might have been what I was talking I'm about. So I'm that's so the game sad. nights card. I'm so yeah. sad that. I have ca I have been casting these cards for years, and yeah. every time I played them, somebody <laughs> asked what they did, and yeah. the, the look on their face when I say to oh, uh, notor so notorious throwing, I get to play some fairies that were X of the amount of damage dealt to you. Oh, and then I time walk. Yeah, take yep. another turn. Yeah, yeah. So that card went way up this week, just on the basis of I guess people are going to be more interested in rogue. So like, it was on game nights. Bunch... Yeah, you're yeah. going to be you're going to be more able to uh to to trigger prowl so like it would have been cool if that was in this deck but like you know sig rigger river cutthroat uh una queen of the feather like there's good stuff in both of these decks so i don't know how inclined in franchise players are going to be to buy these but this could i don't know if it'll bring the prices down but i think it could atten attenuate the growth that was projected for a lot of these cards such as like Omnath and I bought so many Admonition Angels. <laughs> oh. Dude, I went balls deep on Admonition Sorry, buddy. Angel just on and then it's like, okay, it's in the, the commander deck. I'm like, well that's bad. And they're like, it's in the we're doing a secret layer with Admonition <laughs> Angel and Royal Elemental and all this shit. And I was like, Okay, cool. You win some, you lose some. That's why they call that's, it. That's how it goes. That's right. You know, it's uh, it's it, but but I don't mind because people are going to be able to affordably get their admonition angel and their Omnath and their planar outburst. I don't know. Like you got an arcane signet. The, the decks are fine. Plus there are three cards that are quite good in each deck that you can't get anywhere else. I think these commander decks are not, not a buy. If you're a commander player and you think you might want to build around Oban or probably more likely Anna on the Ruin Thief, because I think Anna one and Whisper Steel Dagger are are worth buying the deck. And then all the other value you get is just gravy at that point. I, I, I yeah, that's I great. Like, I don't like Whisper Steel Dagger. I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> you're wrong. And I, I hate you. I, I, I just. Just, oh, just... look at me. I'm the rogue's authority because I've been playing a shitty SIG deck since 2012. <laughs> Get out of here. I I mean, it. I just had like this 10 minute rant on equipment. It's true. Can confirm. I, I don't want to pay three minute sorcery speed and then three minute sorcery speed and then the creature's regular converted mana cost <laughs> also at sorcery speed after connecting with the creature. Cool. I want to cast my opponent's creatures because that's amazing. It is fun. I'll play Hedonist Trove and get their entire I'm sorry, graveyard for one more mana. Paying five times the markup for a bushel of my own grain is worth... <laughs> I'll play Hedonist Trove for one more mana and get your entire it's graveyard. It's the art of war, DJ. You can't argue with it's that. It's reusable. It's a dagger. Daggers do cool shit. Have you ever seen a single anime? <laughs> That's why my Sword of Feast... Have you seen my Sword of Feast and Famine in my SIG deck? Oh, I fucking flip my sword of feast of famine around so I don't hit him with the sharp part, because <laughs> I wouldn't be sporting to hit him with the sharp part. 
So I hit him with the back of my sword of feast and famine and untapped their lands. I did it. Get out of here, you weeb. <laughs> my sword of feast and famine is way better than any sort of crappy little dagger you have. <laughs> wow, we're really doing a deck measuring contest right now. All right. Well, this might have been an abrupt cut. Apologies, but that's because we recorded some great after hours that you can hear at patreon.com slash BSB if you subscribe at the appropriate level. But the one card I wanted to mention on our way out, the casual list of all the casual cards in the set, Maddening Cacophony, one in a blue, each opponent mills eight cards. If you pay the kicker four, each opponent mills half rounded up. Uh, it is coming out of the gates at about 250, so it's not a bulk rare or anything, but if this hits dollar status or something, hey, Everyone likes Mill, right? This is mana. one more mana than Traumatize to Traumatize everybody. Yeah. Seems good to me. I, I mean, the price is hard, right? At this $253 mark here. If it hits a dollar, I feel much better about it. So we'll see where it's at in a month or so. But I wanted to mention it as another card to have my eye on, which hopefully even be like a breaking bulk type thing if it gets cheap. Uh, all right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for listening to our set review. Uh, we had some great after hours tonight, I'll say that. So uh, for all of the, the patrons out there, uh, you'll enjoy it, I think. So everybody, thank you so much for listening. This is Brainstorm Brewery. We'll see you next week. Damn, girl. <laughs> <laughs>